Welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly What's Up. I'm Jacob Clore. And I'm Rachel Anderson, and this is your Weird National News. This next story is about a just married couple. According to the Huffington Post, both the bride and groom's first initial begin with T. So the couple found it fitting to give out little TNT shaped containers holding bath salts as wedding favors. How cute, right? Well, the security guards watching the x-ray monitor at Denver International Airport didn't find it so sweet when they saw wax and fuses inside a checked bag. After a 20-minute evacuation, bomb specialists determined the wax and fuses were just a creative wedding souvenir. Wow, <laughs> is all I have to say. Like, I mean, come on. In this day and age? Yeah, I why? mean, it's creative, but, I mean, you, you got to put a little thought into, yeah, next into time, what you're doing, especially when it comes to airports. Yeah, next time, either, you know, think of more, you know, tame wedding gifts or take the car. Right. So, it is stories like this next one that offer me a good chuckle when I first read them. In Bushland, Texas, an onion truck caught fire near none other than Frying Pan Road. According to the Huffington Post, the truck caught fire after a tire blew out, sending sparks into the semi. The onions in the truck then caught fire and spilled out onto the road. Luckily, no injuries were reported. However, the accident did cause the eastbound lanes of Interstate 40 between Frying Pan Road and Atkinson to be closed. So Rachel, do you think they had to clean up any onion rings? Maybe. I feel like you'd be crying a little bit yeah. with all those onions Exactly. <laughs> it reminds me of that story I think we did a couple weeks ago about the bees, you know, being released by like a truck crash, except for oh, yeah. the onions are now, instead of, you know, stinging the people, they're causing them to cry. <laughs> so stinging their eyes. Okay, yeah. Jacob, this is a weird question, but would you say that your fingernails go quickly or slowly? I guess, I don't know. It's not, it's not something I usually track, but I guess slowly? I mean, I don't have to cut them too often. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, according to the Huffington Post, a man in Prune City, India, has a 6.5 foot long th thumbnail. And that's not all. The 77 year old man hasn't cut his fingernails on his left hand since 1952. Their cumulative length is 358.1 inches. That's almost 30 feet. The man's reasoning behind not cutting his fingernails is a somewhat rebellious one. When he was young, his teacher had very long nails and got upset one day when he broke a nail. When the students asked why he was so angry, the teacher replied they wouldn't understand considering they never had long nails. Ever since that day, he took it as a challenge to grow his own nails. Wow. I mean, when you see the pictures of this guy, he is dedicated. How do you grab things with nails that long? I, how do you do anything? Yeah. How do you leave the house? Get out the front door? Do you know that people like, like there's like the world record holder for toenail length? How do you wear shoes? Like, mm -hmm. do you wear sandals all the, all the time? Because in Blacksburg, you can't wear sandals in the winter. January is too cold. <laughs> I just don't know how you can, you know, make a living and go about your life with that because it obviously weighs a lot. Yeah, well, maybe that is their living. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Well, Rachel, would you marry a man who is about to serve a 20-year jail sentence? Mm, probably not. Yeah. Well, one man who was sentenced to that same amount of time married his girlfriend in the Pennsylvania courtroom. According to the Huffington Post, 47-year-old Greg Howard was sentenced after robbing and assaulting an older woman during a home invasion. Prosecutors say that Howard and two other men posed as furniture delivery men and proceeded to steal $13,000 worth of jewelry. They also left the woman they robbed on her bed with her ankles and wrists bound. Howard was allowed to wear civilian clothes instead of a jumpsuit to the wedding. However, he had to remain shackled during the ceremony. That's terrifying. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you know... Usually, like, when you get married, you have a honeymoon, and I just can't imagine how, like, jilted that wife must feel. Oh, I get to marry this man, but he has to go away for another 20 years. See, I was going to say that it, it kind of depended on whatever crime he did, but that crime is not, not like, an easy one to let go. That was, yeah. that was a scary crime. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh... Leaving your dog alone in the car is bad enough, but this dog just wouldn't have it. According to the Huffington Post, a man was walking his dog in Maine on Saturday when an encounter with another dog caused the man to put his Yorkshire Terrier in the car. While the man was talking with the other dog's owner, the Yorkie managed to shift the Chevrolet Silverado into drive. The truck rolled roughly 75 feet, bounced off a rock, and sank into 10 feet of water. A neighbor rushed to save the dog, and the truck was later towed out of the water. So luckily, the dog was not hurt. Oh, yeah, of, co of course, because... I'm imagining, first of all, in my car, you have to actually, like, lift up a lever and then, like, push the um, the, the car in to drive. Right. But I'm, I'm guessing this is one of those cars where you have the, um, 
the gear shift on the steering wheel so that the dog maybe just like hit it down or something like that. But then also, I thought you had to um, hit the brakes in order to like, you know, activate it. So I don't know, this, this dog is just, has yeah. some kind of luck. Yeah, see my car, like you have to press the button to shift it, but mm -hmm. also I can do it without change or putting my foot on the brake. Mm. Like my friend, my friends do it to me while I'm driving. It's yeah. not, we won't go into that, but yeah. <laughs> Well, going along with the dog theme, it sounds like this dog's bark definitely protected its owner's house from two bears. According to NBCNewYork.com, a 20-pound French bulldog in Monrovia, California, chased away two bears from its owner's property. During the argument, one of the bears got on its hind legs and started to push the dog away. However, the dog went to chase the other bear, causing them to run off the porch. According to the Monrovia, California website, bears and deer are common in the area. Well, thanks to this dog, I don't think that owner has to worry about any of those animals hanging out in his property anytime soon. Wow. I mean, I've seen videos of dogs chasing, like, big animals like that just as, like, a protective thing, but that, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, golly, that dog was so tiny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it definitely has that, like, you know, complex of, I'm big, I'm strong, and I'm 20 pounds. I have a Shih Tzu that <laughs> is 8 pounds and thinks she's about the size of my other dog, who's 50. But that's all we have for Weird National News. But stay tuned, because when we come back, we will have Susanna Shepard and Mary Desmond with Awkward Moments. After year, Fox Ridge Department Homes has been voted Best of Blacksburg by the Virginia Tech Collegiate Times. Fox Ridge offers convenience and quality at an affordable price. Choose from a wide range of floor plans and enjoy ample parking for you and your friends. Fox Ridge is just minutes from Virginia Tech with eight Blacksburg transit stops and a direct walking trail to campus. With pools, recreational courts, and a fitness center, it's no wonder Fox Ridge is number one. Guaranteed student leases available now. Visit foxridgeliving.com. I'm Mary Desmond. And I'm Susanna Shepard. And, and this, this is, is Awkward, Awkward Moments. Moments. You know a band is about to drop a fire album when you see the sneak peek of the album cover. There's something just so important about an album cover. Think about the Beatles' Abbey Road cover or the Rolling Stones' 40 Licks album covers and how great those are. They will be remembered as iconic and intriguing. These albums, however, not so much. These are a little unsettling. Very awkward, to say the least. The first one of these is a fantastically awkward album cover. Uh, it's it's for it's for a band called Bad Lizard. Bad Lizard. Bad Lizard. Yep. And it's a thing. There are mullets galore. Dear God, the mullets. Mullets everywhere, and the poses <laughs> and the clothes. These people are in an awkwardly wonderful daydream of poorly designed retro backdrops and facial hair. Yeah, this is just too much. The guy in the red jacket definitely has some questionable facial hair. It's kind of like it, somebody like drew it with a pencil or something. Definitely. It's, it's, it's creepy. There's just, there's so many questionable aspects to this photo. A lot to look at for all at the same time. For instance, the guy with the skull crop top. Interesting choice of clothing, sir. He kind of pulls this off, like, he kind of pulls off the crop top, to, crop top, but like much, much better than, than I could ever pull off yeah. this crop top. But then, but then there's the guy in the middle who like, who kind of looks like he's like a well-fed version of Paul McCartney. Like he kind of has a, a chubby face, but with McCartney-esque features. Very true. He does look quite a bit like Paul. However, let's not forget the fact that this band is called Bad Lizard. So the question is, which one is the baddest? Tough question. But I'd have to go with the dude on the far, far right. He kind of looks a little bit like Indigo Montoya from Princess Bride, and he kind of looks like he could really just like, like bad lizard stuff. I don't know if I want to know what bad lizard stuff is in actuality, but if I had to choose the baddest of all the lizards, I think the dude with the big sweatband and the overly enthusiastic facial expression is. Just, I relate to him. He's like, yeah, guys, let's go do some stuff. Let's go burn some couches or, you know, whatever they do for fun. Bad lizards, man, I swear, they're, they're wild. Oh, this next album cover has literally crept into the depths of my subconscious and now haunts my sleep. It's casual. No big deal. This is the album cover for Alcoholic DC, a.k.a. one of the most hardcore bands you will probably ever come across. Just, do you think it's, like, actually from DC, or do you I, think DC I, stands I for know. something else? Like, He's alcoholic, I don't know. Direct, I, a direct 
direct, I, direct current, like I have no ideas. I don't know I don't if know. I want to know what they stand for. This picture honestly just makes me nauseous. It's like it, it, it's kind of intriguing, but at the same time, it's really just unnerving. I don't like to look at it for too long. It's just like what you said. It's, it makes me very nervous. I bet these guys. I mean, they're actually like super nice, maybe. This is just like some sort of facade to like disguise their love for puppies and Chinese food and all things happy, you know. Yeah, because, you know, guys have a problem with that, like hiding their masculinity. But just keep telling yourself that, Mary. These guys don't look like the puppy-loving type to me. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong. They do look like a group of guys from my high school, however. Like, they could easily pretend to be the members of this band and no one would notice that it's not actually the original members. No, I just agree with you. Bunch there's, of weirdos. There's probably some some strange people out there. But you know what? More power to them. More power to them. They're comfy with who they are. This next album cover is just, well, it's awkward. In case you have a significant other and you really want to give a massage to, here you go. This is an album devoted to setting the mood of sexy massage time with sensual songs. The first thing you notice when you look at this cover is these two people are on a couch and the guy has a mustache and he looks very much like Brian Fantana from Anchorman. Some people call me the Brian Man. I'm the stylish one of the group. And then there's this woman strewn across the couch looking directly into your soul. Yeah, she's, she's pretty creepy. So, I mean, okay, so after you take in the scene of these two lovers, then you notice the title of the cover. It says, Music to Massage Your Mate By. And then, if, like, that's not enough, in the top right corner, there's a note saying, Explicitly illustrated instruction booklet in clothes. Like, what? <laughs> so not only do you get a fantastically put together album cover, you also get a sexy time playlist and also a booklet of soft porn. Classy. It's everything you'd want if you were looking for a terrible 70s-like version of Netflix and chill. And you get to learn how to massage your mate if you don't already have those mad skills already. The next album cover is from a band called Heaven Kellum. I, I'm actually intrigued by this band. When I first saw the cover, I, I laughed out loud, of course, because they're kind of silly and they're kind of ridiculous. But then I really looked at it. And it's just, it's so out of control and odd, I couldn't help but look up. Well, Mary, I'm pretty sure you're their one-person fan club because I just think it's totally weird. I have zero idea as to what's going on. There's a guy in a bishop costume and a guy who looks like Hagrid from Harry Potter and a cross in the background, so there's some religious aspect with Harry Potter, and I'm so confused. Now, now, Susanna. This album cover, at least, has like a loose theme, you know, as compared to the other ones, like, the other ones are just like fire and like masculinity and like weird sexual tones, but this one's like, okay, so like, I get it, it's like a kind of like a 16th century like religious theme, so I was like, okay, cool, they kind of have a concept here, so I looked them up, and they're like, they were created in Finland at this bar, because these dudes were having a weird conversation, and uh, they were like, we should take old religious hymns and like put them to metal songs and so i thought that was pretty that's interesting that's pretty creative they definitely were on some kind of drugs in that bar that night though so i mean i guess that's kind of interesting to that aspect yeah i mean i i, I just they, they, they're probably on drugs or something but you know what it's interesting and good for them they're, they're being they're being to each their own. I mean, people take drugs for their own reason. I would love to be a Finnish fly on that bar wall, though. Just thinking about exactly how that conversation went and just everything that went down to make that album cover an actual thing and the songs on the album that pertains to the album cover. Just, these are some crazy bands. There's some crazy people out there, man. There definitely are, but it's good because it's subjects for us. Definitely. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode of Awkward Moments. When we come back, we'll have Haley Olivenbaum and Alec Holcomb with viral videos. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig.
Welcome back to the Weekly What's Up. I'm Haley Olivenbaum. And I'm Alec Holcomb. And, and this, this is Viral, viral videos. videos. Today I'm kicking off the segment with my personal favorite video on the internet. Swiggity Swooty, I'm coming for that booty. Swiggity Swooty, I'm coming for that booty. Yep. Swiggity Swooty, I'm coming for that booty. On my way to steal your girl. Swiggity Swooty, I'm coming for that booty. Swiggity Swooty, I'm coming for that booty. Yep. So I'm trying to figure out what is going on in this video. Why would you put a like a song over that? Monkey? Because it it looks like it's coming for the booty. <laughs> That's is my I watch. I just love the once, arms like, though. Like, like I don't understand. I know he's like he's stealthy. He's sleuthing. Sleuthing. He's sleuthing. Is that and a he's word? He's coming for the booty. Okay. Swiggity swooty. It's my favorite Sweet. video. All right, cool. My favorite. <laughs> I'll be following up Haley's video with one of my own favorite videos. Simply being a commercial of a man fighting a bear. At the river mouth, the bears catch only the tastiest, most tender salmon. Which is exactly what we at John West want. John West endured the worst to bring you the best. So when I first watched this, like the first like 10 seconds and I see him running, I think he's just crazy and like he's actually fighting a bear, but then like the bear obviously fights back and well, it's fake, but who, <laughs> who said, let me film this, get fake bear, like make fake bears fighting, like what, what's the point? Of no, this? but like, I, you know it's fake because there is, the bear has kung fu moves and yeah. is legit. But when you first see him running, you think he's a crazy person about to it's go just, fight like a crazy bear. It's just epic. That's the whole point of the commercial. It's to be epic? Be, yes. <laughs> this next video shows a talent that very few people have. The Bottle Boys bring back a classic Disney song to life using only bottles. to be king. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, who sits there and duct tapes bottles together? And then there's some, for some reason, they're like in their bathrobes and like shaving cream and like shampoo. I don't know where that comes into play. That might have been something like I, I another honestly, thing. But it's <laughs> talented. Like who else can do that? How many people do you know can do that? I mean, I wasn't really paying attention to their clothes. I was enjoying the quality of the song. I, I thought it was really cool. It was really, it was really good. I yeah. was impressed. Uh, we're going to just wrap things up with another talented group of people playing music. But instead of playing for people online, they're playing for cows. <laughs>
He just has his tuba. Like, let me pull my tuba out of my pocket and start playing for these cows. And then you keep watching, and more people come. It's, it's like great. a car full of old <laughs> I, men I, playing jazz music. And I'm the cows thinking are somebody there. like broke down on the side of the road. And, and they're just, like, well, I mean, the guy's not coming for an hour, so let me just, you let know. Let me just break out my clarinet. <laughs> and then the cows are just chilling. They, but they're they kind of terrified. Care. They're like, they're not in. terrified. They're kind of scary. Mm -mm. Why would they come? Why would, like, if you see at the end of the video, you see, like, all the cows, all the cows right next they've to gathered. the band. It's, it's great. <laughs> That's all for viral videos this week. Stay tuned because up next we have Kevin Stefani and Zaid Farah with TTG and the Basilisk. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back to the weekly What's Up. I'm Dan Rather. I'm Ron Burgundy. And, and this, this is TTG in the Basilisk. Basilisk. All right, Kevin, please give out your trophy of decency, your decent Drew. Gladly, Zaid. My decent Drew will go to Chris Mintz, a 30-year-old military veteran who's been praised as a hero for what he did during the tragic shooting in Oregon that happened this past week. When the shooter attempted to enter into a room to shoot more innocent civilians, Mintz attempted to block the door and was shot three times. The shooter would later give him four more shots as he lay on the ground, taking Mintz's total bullet ta bullets taken count to seven. He was immediately taken to a hospital and is now in stable condition where he will recover until he can begin his physical therapy to learn how to walk again. He didn't really end up saving anybody, but it's the thought that counts, and for his blind and stupid courage, I commend him with my decent Drew Award. Wow, seven shots. That's a lot. Yeah. There's only two short How many of was 50 Tupac? Cent, you uh, know? 50 Cent. No, Tupac was much more though, right? Uh, I actually don't know the count for Tupac. But and he's Tupac expected died. to make a full recovery, do you know? Tupac's been dead for well, <laughs> about 20 years now. We all wish he made a full recovery, you know? Yeah, that would be great, you know? And bring some life back God, to music. Rest in peace, Tupac. It's true. He's going to come back again. All right. There's a heaven for a G. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, well, how about you, Zid? My award goes to Andrew Gunn and Kostya Noveselov. And they're two genius decent Drews who have supposedly identified a method of producing, hi producing hydrogen fuel from the air. For all those chem majors out there, if you've ever heard of the Hebert process, which I'm sure you have, then you understand the vein of thinking these researchers follow. The Hebert process pulls nitrogen, an abundant gas found naturally in the air, and fixes it, fixes it into a useful uh, compound. These researchers hope to use graphene, sheets of carbon molecules essentially, to filter single protons, also called hydrogen, uh, from the air itself. Doing so would provide the foundation for a new age of fuel-based technology, from fuel cell cars to large-scale power generators operating on nothing but air. We wish the best of luck to these bold, decent Jews in their endeavor to free the world from fossil fuel technology. Wow. Yeah. Do you think this is going to be up and running soon? I think it has to. I mean, uh, uh, either this technology or others, there's, uh, there's been a lot of this kind of claim. But uh, just as the Haber process was successful when nobody thought it would be, I mean, pulling nitrogen from the air, that's pretty outlandish, you know? It's pretty ridiculous. Before it's done, but it's now. I mean, I've done it before, method. but, you know. You know, only once. Yeah. Yeah, on a weekend. Yeah, it was a Tuesday. Weekend project, DUI. All right. Nitrogen going up. <laughs> Anyways. That's a Tuesday, Kevin. It was Tuesday. Oh, all right. I told you it was Tuesday. Yeah. Anyways. No, it's fine, it's fine. All right. It's time for Decently Deficient. This week, I'm going to give my decently deficient award to this self-righteous fool. The girl saw what she perceived to be a turtle crossing the road and decided to pull her car over to the side of the road to help save the reptile. She thought that maybe by filming herself saving the animal, she might inspire others to do kind <laughs> deeds for helpless critters. But instead, she ended up humiliating herself in front of thousands of people on the internet by plunging the animal to its certain death. Her high school biology teacher will be embarrassed after this one, as the girl had misclassified the animal as a turtle, a reptile that spends much of its life in the water. In reality, it was a tortoise, an animal that cannot swim. The girl's dreams will be haunted with the resounding kerplunk that resulted when she fired the tortoise to its watery grave. Further schooling in biology and decency are needed.
that's it. Honestly, I'm not sure I would have been able to tell the difference though. <laughs> yeah, that. it was a little difficult. Uh, and also, but uh, I wouldn't have like thrown it straight into the water, you know? Like, yeah. She just took yeah, it. There was a ledge there. She just threw it down into the water. You know what? What goes around comes around. She probably can't swim. Yeah. I hope some elephant finds her one day and picks her up with her trunk and throws her <laughs> into the water. You know, that'd be great. All right. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> Saving humans is a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My decently def deficient connoisseurs this rainy first week in October, although no longer rainy, thank God, would be uh, the three female journalists that took issue at not being let into the men's rock locker room upon demand that had to wait for player consent to be let in. The bouncer outside the Jaguars locker room has gotten flack as being sexist recently for not letting these curious lasses into the team locker room after a game. We here at V2T uh, TV wholeheartedly support gender equality, but one doesn't usually permit men to waltz into women locker rooms or restrooms, or permit women to waltz into the male equivalents. So I stand by the bouncer's decision to provide the JAG players a modicum of etiquette in this manner. After all, the bouncer let the female reporters in after it was okayed by the players, whose privacy was the only issue here. Because of these three ladies, the bouncer is now being labeled as a sexist for the minor resistance he put up at something he has, as a bouncer is supposed to consider, the privacy of the team males undressing in front of three male, uh, female st uh, strangers. And that, my viewers, is not a decent thing. Frankly, though, it's a nice locker room, and I'd want to go in there <laughs> as well. It's actually got a nightclub theme going. Does it really? Yeah. Yeah. It has a nightclub theme. It has a nightclub theme. And the Jaguars. Yes. What are they celebrating? They Losing, have, like, like all the time? Movies. Like. <laughs> I'm sure they're not celebrating. They have nothing to celebrate. <laughs> they're the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> Maybe yeah. they're celebrating new uniforms or something. But it's probably or the new nightclub that they have. Now. It could be. Wow, that's amazing. That's enough, really. Very Florida of them. It's about that time to take a trip to Rant City. Mm. TTG Razi, please bestow your tirade upon our unworthy ears. This week, I will be ranting about the Virginia Tech football team. Woe is upon the Hokies yet again, as Virginia Tech's team is beginning its annual downward spiral after a very positive start. We welcomed Pitt into Lane Stadium on a most disgusting of October afternoons, and the game result seemed to mirror the weather. The offense was devastatingly abysmal, gaining only 100 total yards, the lowest total since Beamer's first game in charge in 1987. Nine of those yards were from the ground game, while Brendan Motley went 9 for 20 for 91 yards and three terrible interceptions, following, including following two consecutive sacks in the Hokies' embarrassing last gaps drive that ended in misery. To add insult to injury, this loss came after this week's announcement that star defensive back Kendall Fuller would miss the remainder of the season through a torn meniscus. Hokie Nation already had worrying thoughts about this season, but now many Hokies are beginning to worry about our 22-year bowl streak that is looking more and more likely to end. The rest of the season's schedule will not be easy, and there is little room for error if we want to go bowling in December. Zaid, would you like to slither in here with your parcel tongue pontification? Uh, nicely put, Kevin. My rant today is closer to home. It's about these ridiculous lines I'm seeing at every dining hall on campus. Mm. And it's not just lunchtime Amen. or brunch, Amen. but every decent waking hour of the day. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm inclined during my rant to blame the administration themselves on enrolling too many people, mm. but I've actually been told that it's an issue of underemployment this semester. So in actu actuality, my rant is really a proposal. If you're looking for an on-site job at Tech with hours convenient to yourself, consider the nine an hour dining center employee, employee position. I had fun when I worked at the cantina in Owens, although I can tell you personally, it wasn't for nine at the time, which I'm only mildly salty about. Mm. <laughs> and if in doing so, you can save me from starving to death waiting for food, then it's a win for everybody. Turner is just an anthill this year. Yeah, Turner and... Uh, the line for Cadoba is way past the salad line. Oh, man. Like, who is going to wait that long to get it, Cadoba? It kind of makes me want a salad, though. Really? Yeah. Uh, I well, won't wait in that line either. <laughs> <laughs> salad? There's no meat in salad. I'd well, actually, they have pretty good meat at the... Whatever that place is. It's not the Leaf and Ladle. That's the West End one. Uh, I don't know. West End is my base, though, I think. I wouldn't want to ruin Ripping, meat with salad. the Ad, ki ad Quad Kids. Are you Ad Quad Kid? I actually am. Kind of? Yeah, BSC. I guess Sites is a. That's kind of Agua, I guess. That is the center of Agua. <laughs> I'm not sure. All right, he doesn't know anything about it. <laughs> Anyways, that'll do it for this week's episode. <laughs> I know plenty about Agua today. <laughs> Way to undermine me in front of all my uh, fans. Yeah, hey, all. You know, they're all my fans. Ever actually, since, I'm sure the ratings have gone up, right? Mm, I think they <laughs> do we have fans? stayed high <laughs> because of me. I don't know. Anyways, have a good week to all my fans, and we'll see you next time on the weekly What's Up.